Hey everybody, here we are with a Windows XP virtual machine. We're going to talk about some of the differences from later from different revisions of Windows XP and what made it a huge success. So let's go ahead and boot in the Windows XP. And you may notice and I'm running Windows XP Service Pack 3 because of the boot screen. If I was running RTM or Service Pack 1, it would show what edition I'm running. Of course, I'm running the professional. If I was running home edition, it would have a little green bar moving on the boot screen. But if it was running the Media Center edition versions prior to Service Pack 2, it would have the blue bar. But as you may notice, I log in. I have the classic login enabled. I'll, so I could use Control Delete to log in. But you do have the option to switch back to the welcome screen. So, so it's booting up. And I'm going to also explain some of the difference I'm running. The official service pack 3. This is not the unofficial service pack for that a lot of people would run on XP so I'm about to talk about some of the small differences and also Windows XP was like a real huge success because they had several editions out there that there was even a a lightweight version of XP called when for older computers called Windows Fundamentals for legacy PCs. You had Windows Embedded 2009, which was a more updated version of Windows XP Embedded. Then you had the XP Media Center Edition, which was more like for like home theaters and a lot of multimedia top of the line computers so here it is windows xp professional version 2002 service pack 3 but on the unofficial service pack 4 would change it to version 2014 but if i was running media center edition it would say version 2005 because they did make several versions of windows media xp media center edition you had the Version 2003, version 2004, and version 2005. But everybody know and love version 2005. One unique thing in Windows XP, you can change the computer description if you're using the welcome screen. Or it'll say, turn off so-and-so computer. I just put that just to be funny. And it gives you the ability to change automatic updates. And one thing unique about XP that it it was very simple for a lot of IT guys who wanted to service computers when they needed when they were having computer issues in certain businesses. Also giving them the ability to quickly adjust their um bit of adjust the visual settings to their liking and or wanting to get the best performance. So let me open up a Windows Explorer window and show you what it looks like. What it looks like without the visual. So let's say if I choose adjust for best performance, it's gonna switch the Windows visuals and set the theme to from in Windows to Windows Classic and it's also going to disable the clear type font and it, do, it takes away your options in Windows Explorer for certain files or so, for like a folder based on pictures and music or documents or accessing certain drives in the computer or any control panel settings. So if I, but I have it set to let Windows choose what's best because it 
it gives me the ability to allow me, even though it has the best appearance because I want to be able to use clear type because Windows XP was also the first operating system to include clear type. So in Control Panel, you, with the introduction of Service Pack 2, it even added a security center to allow you to control your automatic updates and your internet settings and your firewall. Even though it's not like I need an antivirus program because I'm running a virtual machine. And most of the, I, like a lot of IT guys would disable automatic updates. Because they don't want it to interfere with you doing something business related. And you have the ability to create multiple user accounts or change the way that users log in and not, which I have the welcome screen disabled because I want to use the classic login, which you can use control or delete by going to. Control user passwords too, and just clicking that advanced tab, or you can just manually manually enter your username. But if you're going to use the welcome screen, I highly recommend disabling that. And when and this is the Winver. Here's the Windows XP showing you the build number. And with Service Pack 1 also introduced the ability to change your programs, de your default, allow you to switch your, to your default programs. For default messaging program, media player, web browser, and email program. And you may wonder how you can get Windows Classic and Windows XP is by switching the, to the Windows, appearance and going up to the Windows Classic style and these are all the color schemes that were imported from Windows 2000 because Windows XP was actually built off of Windows 2000. It's basically Windows 2000 with a different coding and with a fresher price looking user interface and with the introduction of Service Pack 3 it also removed the Energy Star logo for the power settings due to some antitrust reasons. And you do have the Internet Explorer missing, which was also in the Service Pack, which was part of Service Pack 3. That Microsoft removed the option of Internet Explorer because of antitrust reasons. And the highest version of Internet Explorer you can use is Internet Explorer at version 8. So, yep, the highest version is 8. And uh, you can't go no higher than eight on internet with Internet Explorer. It's not like nobody uses Internet Explorer, but it's best to update it just to be on the safe side. It, but you can use third-party browsers like Firefox, which I'm running version fifty-two point nine zero. This is um I'm running Firefox ESR. Which is the, if you don't know what that means, it's extended service release. And also with Service Pack 2, it also replaces Windows Media Player 8, which is Media Player for XP, with Media Player 9, which can be upgraded to Windows Media Player 11, but later versions of XP with Media Center Edition 2005, Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, include, and also. A later revision of server 2003 includes Media Player 10. And you can run Office 2010 as the highest version, but I even though I got Office 2007. And Windows XP even gives you the option to switch to the classic start menu. Which is going to take a while. But it don't make sense to have the classic style start menu and XP. 
but I prefer using the classic start menu like an older version of Windows because it don't really it takes away that Windows XP experience and you may notice in in Windows XP you can Service Pack 3 also includes a later version of remote desktop connection and you can use third party cert pro well you can use other programs like Windows Search for the as the replace the classic search companion and you do have a photo story program that requires Windows Media Player 10 or above so in uh you do have I believe with Service Pack 2 you can do um, have the ability to do Bluetooth network connections so let's talk and this is with the classic search companion but you gotta go to um, Windows search to click over here which gives you the animated characters in the search companion Windows Suit XP was the successor to Windows XP. I mean, um, Windows XP is the successor to Windows 2000 and Windows Millennium Edition, known as Windows Me. Despite Windows Me being the last 9x based operating system, while 2000 being built off the NT kernel, because Windows 2000 was a very rock solid operating system, but if not many people were happy with the user interface of Windows XP a lot of them would switch over to Windows 2000 and if Windows XP would have never existed it would probably be because Microsoft was going to consider making a home version of Windows 2000 called Windows 2000 personal so hope this video helped some of you guys out explaining some of the differences And if there's something else you want to add in, feel free to comment and hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.